What is up, everybody? This is Chris, and welcome to Lost in Comics, where we help you get lost on your comic journey. This is the Lost in Comics Top 3, where I tell you my three favorite comics that I read from a stack of comic books, and I let you know which of those were my favorite. I rate them on a five jabroni scale, with five being the best. I say this a lot, but this week in particular was a very difficult week for me to choose a top three. I'm going to tell you several books that I enjoyed this week because there was a lot of great stories. Now, before we dive in, pardon me, my voice is very off. I've been feeling a little under the weather. I'm highly medicated right now, but I have a duty to get this top three out, especially because the delays last week kept this video from coming out. So I must get the top three out, no matter who's watching out there. But I love talking about comics, and we're going to jump right into this with... Number three. Gotham City, year one, issue number five from DC Comics. We've got Tom King on writing, Phil Hester on beautiful art, inks by Eric Gapsteur, colors by Jordi Belair, and letters by the fantastic Clayton Cowles. This was the pen ultimate issue of what has been a fantastic series. This entire series has taken us back into the dark history of not only Gotham City, but Gotham's prized family, the Waynes. If you remember, in this story, Helen Wayne was kidnapped, and through a series of events, which I do not wish to spoil for you, I'll just say we got the answers and the motive to who was behind the kidnapping. It's not pretty, and it will downright piss you off, like it did me when I found out what exactly was going on behind the scenes. Slam Bradley continues to be the focal point of this story, a hard-boiled detective who's been investigating this whole debacle since the beginning. Look, when you go into a series written by Tom King, any Tom King series, you got to prepare yourself for some heavy dialogue. I'm just telling you that right out front. But here's the thing. Not all heavy dialogue is a bad thing. If done correctly, it can really flesh out a story. And while this series has been verbose, like most Tom King stories are, it doesn't feel long. It doesn't feel boring. I am engaged from the opening to the closing. If you love a good crime mystery based in the historical home of the world's greatest detective, look no further. Gotham City Year One. And I have given this issue a... You know, huh? I absolutely love that book. Four. I gave it a four. A solid 4.0. Which takes us to... Two. Dream Master, issue number three from Black Box Comics. Jonathan Hedrick on writing, Luigi Baraselli on art, colors by Ruben Curto, and letters by DC Hopkins. I love everything about this comic, y'all. And through three issues, I can tell you it's my favorite thing I have read from Jonathan Hedrick. I messaged him on Instagram yesterday, and I told him that. I said, I love the recount, dude, but Dream Master has everything. It is the best thing I've, re I've read from him. And it has everything that you want in a series. It continues to grab my attention every single issue. The subject matter of the dream world, the protector of the innocent, the dream master himself, all of it. It really gets my imagination running wild. A huge part of that can be contributed to the art also. The dream sequences are truly mesmerizing, truly something that you might only see in a dream or a nightmare. They're beautifully drawn. And every issue, we are given this deeper look into the hierarchy and vastness of this world. The Dream Master is beginning to remember some things that maybe involve a child that he once had. But will he be able to remember in time before the Dark Queen destroys him? Each of the first three issues of this title have been on my top three. Please do not let the small indie publisher label keep you from experiencing this comic. Fans of the Sandman universe, um, fans of the movie Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, this is even for, for superhero fans with the Dream Master kind of in the middle of the, in the thick of things. He plays a superhero type figure. I can't stress how good this book is and how much fun I am having with it. Dream Master, I have given this issue a... You know, huh? I absolutely love that book. Four. A 4.2. A 4.2, and it is time for the pick of the week. But before I tell you the pick, if you are enjoying the top three, which we do every single week here at Lost in Comics, except last week because of the Texas weather delays, but every week we do this video, if you're enjoying what we're doing here, 
do me a huge solid, guys. Do me a favor, hit that like button. We genuinely appreciate it. If you stumbled onto Lost in Comics for the first time and you're watching this, hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss any opportunity you get to get Lost in Comics with us right here on the channel. And we've had a busy week here at Lost in Comics. Be sure you check out the January previews book video where I tell you 10 books to watch out for in the month of April 2023 that you might want to add to your pool list. Um, that video has some great uh, details as far as FOC dates, prices, and release dates. And we also had a great interview with Ringo-nominated writer Jason Douglas, an insightful look into his comics and his whole life. Do yourself a huge favor, watch that interview. I can guarantee you will come out better for it. Enough of all that, it is time for the... It's the pick of the week, the pick of the week, pick of the week. And this week's pick of the week is... Harrower, issue number one, Boom Studios, Justin Jordan on writing, art and colors by Bram Revel, and letters by Pat Brosso. This is a brand new series that came out of the gate swinging. To some residents of Barlow, New York, the Harrower is like a he's like a boogeyman figure. They've heard the legends, they believe him to be only a myth, especially the younger generation of this quaint little town. But to the adults who have been around for quite a while, they tell the stories of the Harrower. When summoned, the Harrower is the Avenger that keeps Barlow, New York pure. Every Halloween, Tragedy seems to strike Harlow, and once again, some people believe it's because of the Harrower, and some do not believe it at all. One thing's for sure, this little town, this, this little quaint place has some deep-seated se secrets in this town, and some people are going to suffer. Um, this book's coming a week after Where Monsters Lie, issue number one last week, which continues to feed that slasher horror vibe for me. And both of those books have this peaceful backdrop that makes the events of the story even more unsettling. While this is certainly a horror story, it also has some very slice of life moments with our high school characters and i am all about that what a fantastic debut issue i am highly anticipating issue number two and take a look at that the harrower on there i really like that man very cool creepy looking character and i have given this issue a you know huh? i absolutely love that book four a 4.3. It is my pick of the week. I really enjoyed that comic. I'm going to go over some runner-ups with you. Other books that I thought were very worthy and could have been top three worthy this week. We have Spy Superb, issue number two from Dark Horse. Man, Dark Horse, a ton of great comics right now. They are doing a fantastic job of releasing great titles. Uh, we've got Matt Kent on writing, art, and letters. Uh, colors by Charlene Kent. Matt Kent is such an underrated talent. He can literally do it all. But what he does best is he creates these fleshed out, very entertaining stories. He does it time after time, and Spice Superb is no exception to that. Spice Superb is basically Kaiser Soze, right? For years, he has been this unstoppable spy that no one nor any nation can seem to track, capture, nor kill. Um, when world powers finally think that they might have a bead on this this spy, him, her, whoever it is, someone realizes that this whole spy superb business may just be the biggest ruse of all time. Um, this book is a lot of fun, plenty of humor peppered in, and a wonderful spy story. This one is really good. My next runner up, we've got The Flash, issue number 792, DC Comics, Jeremy Adams on writing, Roger Cruz on art, Colors by Luis Guerrero and Letters by Rob Lay. This is part three of the One Minute War event. A group that calls themselves The Fraction has figured out a way to weaponize the Speed Force. They're going from one planet to another, destroying those planets with no one able to push back. That is until they come to Earth, because Earth has its own speedsters that can weaponize the Speed Force also, but they know how to use it for good. Impulse, the character Impulse in this one, really given his moment to shine in this comic and proves that sometimes thinking off Impulse can in fact save the day. For the thousandth, millionth, hundredth, whatever time, I'm going to tell you this, if you like superhero comics, do yourself a favor, you got to read Jeremy Adams' run on The Flash. At a minimum, 
Get yourself some copies of the One Minute War event. We are on uh, part number part three, and then we had the Flash One Minute War special that came out last week. Just fantastic, fantastic uh, storytelling and superhero comics. A few shout-outs to get to here. A couple of shout-outs. Batman, issue number 133. Or 132, excuse me. Batman. Uh, Chip Sadarsky on writing. Mike Hawthorne on art. I will be honest with you, I was not digging on Batman number 131 and was kind of left scratching my head like, what just happened? Um, why was Batman in an alternate Gotham City after all the events of Failsafe? Well, if you read Batman 132 this week, you get some answers and it is actually a very good explanation. This is a perfect example of why you never want to judge a series based off of one or two issues. Uh, Chip Zdarsky has a plan. I'm a believer. Great issue of Batman, although I really miss Jorge Jimenez on the title. Um, he was meant to draw Batman. Mike, uh, Mike Hawthorne is doing a great job and doing it well, but man, we miss you, Jorge. Uh, next up on our shout, shout outs, we've got It's Only Teenage Wasteland, issue number three from Dark Horse Comics. We've got Kurt Pyers on writing and Jacoby Salcedo on art. This has been a stellar series, and in this issue, the Wasteland continues to grow with the introduction of a new cast of characters. Our main characters were just a few te uh, teenagers partying one night, and in a flash, they were in the wasteland of this apocalyptic world. This book is full of irreverent humor, slice of life, end of the world stakes. It's all here. This was issue three of four. It feels like we're just learning about this world, and it feels like it's just continuing to grow and expand. I have no idea how this is going to be wrapped up with just one more issue left. This series is only supposed to be four issues, um, to my knowledge. I really hope the team nails the ending because it just feels like we are wide open, like the universe is just expanding, and a ton of stories could come out of this. Um, but we're supposed to wrap it up in one more issue, so let's see how that goes. But this has been fantastic. Again, I hope it just ends really well and, and clinches what this series has begun with. Those are my comics. Uh, another shout out real quick. Little Monsters issue number 10, Jeff Lemire. Fantastic. Uh, this one really opens up this world of Little Monsters. It gives us a lot of answers. Who are these kids? Where did they come from? What's their origin? It's been a slow burn as far as like, who are these kids? And this one really opens things up. So just a shout out to Little Monsters issue number 10. Fantastic. That is it. What are you guys reading this week? Are there any books that I mentioned tonight that are, are that pique your interest? Um, is there anything that I'm not reading that you think I should be reading? Let me know in the comments below. I truly appreciate that. Thank you for watching. Wish me luck with this throat. I hope I feel better very soon so I can breathe. And as always, guys, stay lost in comics. I'll see you next time.